Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Allison Dwyer, and I'm the Marketing Specialist at CQG. Today we will be learning about the benefits of RCMX ALGO strategies, which are available in CQG Integrated Client and CQG QTrader. Today presenting, we have Jim Stavros from CQG and Joe Signorelli from RCMX. Jim, specialized, or Jim started with CQG in 2005 and is currently a part of our product specialist team. Here at CQG, he specializes in custom studies, conditions, and trade systems for use in CQG products. He is also an expert in Microsoft Excel based RTD. Jim is a veteran trader for many plus years and a member of CME where he specializes in trading a variety of commodities. We also have Joe Signorelli, who's the founder and managing partner of RCMX. Prior to forming RCMX, Joe served as the head of futures for Wedbush, as well as a member of the board of directors for Lime Brokerage. He has also held positions in the past, including co-founder and CEO of Cactus Trading Systems, managing director of the Quaint Stat Trading Group, and partner and director at Stafford Trading. He currently sits on the University of Illinois and UCLA's MSFE boards and has held memberships at the CME, CBOT, Chicago Stock Exchange, and Minnesota Grain Exchange. If you have any questions during the webinar, please make sure to enter them into the Q&A window off to the right-hand side, and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. Um, starting us off today will be Joe with RCMX. So Joe, would you like to tell us a little bit more about RCMX? Sure, I will, and thank you, Ellison for the uh, introduction, and thank you everyone for joining us today. We appreciate you taking time out to hear about the algos and hear how we're integrating these algos within CQG. Um, with me also today is David Don. He's our CIO and head of algorithmic trading. He'll be going through many of the technical uh, aspects of the algos and the parameter settings. Um, let me tell you first a little bit about RCM Alternatives. RCM is a, a boutique investment firm bridging the gap between FinTech and high touch merging new technology with industry veterans to help trading firms reach their potential in terms of alpha generation, capital raising, and operational efficiency. And then a little bit more about RCMX, which is a division under RCM. Um, it's a multi-dimensional financial technology firm, and we also provide, obviously, execution algos for equities and also futures and custom algos. We have a division for risk management for consulting for hedge funds, mutual funds, and third-party asset managers. We also have our strategy studio proprietary uh, technology under RCM, which is licensed to high-volume, low-latency systematic traders across asset classes. So that's uh, pretty much our, our firm and our division within the firm. So firstly, when we look at, before David gets into the algos themselves, we kind of believe, or we believe, algos level the, play, level the playing field. According to the CFTC report, automated trading systems make up nearly 70% of all trading in the futures markets. Uh, and then secondly, algorithms are designed to increase your execution quality by benefiting from the speed and technology they're built on. Thirdly, algorithms minimize your trade impact on markets using embedded logic while still allowing opportunity and cost and capture. Execution algorithms are able to dynamically interact with the exchange order books to lessen the inherent advantage of the automatic trading strategy. So leveling the playing field by being able to interact with the order books at the exchanges is a key part of algos, and our systems and our technology allow you to do that. So I'm going to let David now take it and kind of go over some of the cost impact numbers. So uh, when thinking about why you might use an execution algorithm, uh, one thing to think about is the cost of trading and its impact on your strategy's returns. And uh, so this is a simple calculation here that we've made on a bunch of popularly traded products and what their tick size is. And if you're running a CTA that has um, a certain amount of turnover in this example, if you're doing uh, 200 and uh, 2,500 round turns per million, um, that um, is an easy calculation to imply the average annual cost from crossing the spread. 
And uh, as you can see with these numbers, that actually digs into your returns in a material way, uh, costing you from a couple percent uh, to over 6% on an annualized returns basis. And uh, um, you know, for a higher turnover sort of TTAs, these uh, numbers can be pretty conservative, that you might have higher round turns per million. And uh, you uh, may also have order sizes where you're not just crossing the spread and taking the liquidity you see on the opposite side of the book, but you might even uh, be incurring market impact and burning through the book or pushing where the market goes as they're reacting to your order flow. And the idea of an execution algorithm is essentially to minimize your slippage or track a benchmark given your preferences for how sensitive you are to executing quickly versus spreading out your order. And I'll turn it back to Joe for more. Yeah, so, so uh, why use our algos? Um, this is where we think we differentiate from the competitors. Um, our algos are built by traders. Everyone on our team has had pretty decent experience in trading, whether it's been market making, whether it's been stat uh, whether it's been on option trading or futures trading. So we have a vast amount of experience on trading. So um, that's one of the things we believe is one of our competitive edges. Um, optimizing your trading, we believe that um, let us do the heavy lifting. We know the microstructure of the market um, and, and by embedding these uh, algos in CQG's uh, system, we believe that uh, you should focus on the alpha and uh, the traders should focus on what their trade is and it's tough enough to find those trades and count on the algorithms to do the, the lifting and, the, uh, and do the execution. Um, our strategy studio platform, we believe, is another competitive edge in why you should use our algos. Our platform is 10 years of development. It, it, the stack of technology uh, is very microstructure aware. Um, it, it, it's embedded and we understand the, the order books very well, and whether it's equities or futures. And it's a key component and one of the main components in delivering uh, quality executions. Custom, we also, because of our platform and our experience, we have the ability to customize algos. And not just, uh, we deliver our seven benchmark algos, which are pretty much, uh, should be sufficient for most clients. But because of our experience and understanding that some clients may need something specific. It's not going to take months for us to turn around a custom algo. We, we can usually do it in a few weeks with our platform. David, why don't you then go through uh, Strategy Studio? Yeah, so we wanted to talk a little bit about the technology that we build the algorithms on. This is a technology suite called Strategy Studio, and we've been licensing it out for the past 10 years to uh, high-frequency traders, low-latency traders, uh, um, clients doing things like um, uh, liquidity provision or um, intraday stat arm event-based trading, uh, basically strategies that trade in a black box fashion and are sensitive to latency. And uh, the stack is written in native C++. Uh, we do in-process feed handling and um, the event processing uh, uh, platform has a very low latency so we're able to keep up with the market data well and not fall behind on where we see the prices in the market, which is um, very important for getting good fills. Oftentimes, clients have a, an attitude that high-frequency traders, speed is critical to them, but if you have a big order and you're just trying to carve it out over the course of the day, speed is less important. And we think that that view is, is misguided because uh, even if you're spreading out an order over the course of the day, you're still trying to optimize when you place child orders, what price you put on your limits for the child orders, and those decisions, if you're slow to reach the market, if you're slow to process the market data, you miss your fills and you have to subsequently chase your fills at inferior prices. So speed uh, helps even if you're working a big order slowly. Uh, this technology uh, is also uh, cross-asset class, um, uh, data vendor neutral, it has a built-in simulator, and you use the same strategy code across the cycle of back testing, simulating against live market data, and trading in production. So uh, that um, you're using the same code live as you've been using in your research and development that minimizes your risk of taking strategies into production. And it also helps you uh, continuously uh, improve the strategies by monitoring the simulated performance to uh, the live performance. And then as you uh, tweak the strategy, you can rerun them and back test, um, keep them uh, simulated uh, against the live trades and see how the changes are impacting the results. And um, uh, the software gives us a lot of easy abilities to add new parameters and uh, tweak strategies live while they're running. And it, um, because it's a mature API that was built to be trader friendly, it uh, uh, greatly minimizes our time to market for, for changing algos and bringing new algos to production.
So David's going to go over a little bit about the microstructure and why it matters and go through some of the CME's uh, batching uh, components and why don't you go through some of the... Uh, yeah, so um, when you think about execution algorithms and the complexities that they face, besides being fast, another important ingredient is being sensitive to the markets that you're trading. Different markets have different complexities. When we develop equity algorithms, we have to pay attention to the fact that in the U.S. markets, there's a dozen exchanges and 30 dark pools uh, where we can seek fills on. In the futures market, we face a different complexity in that each product trades differently and has um, different characteristics in terms of when they're active and uh, how they behave across the expiry cycle, uh, how uh, we, um, monthly contracts behave versus quarterly contracts. And so all of our execution algorithms are uh, designed to take these nuances into account and uh, pay attention to which matching engine the product is trading on. So if a, a product is trading with a pro rata matching engine at CME, we'd be uh, more likely to place, say, bigger child orders when we're attempting to get past the fills. And uh, our, uh, um, our, our forecasts for the volatility and volumes are all product specific and modeled for each product. And our team has extensive experience uh, developing strategies um, for, uh, for futures products and strategies like um, market making algorithms and grains and uh, um, short term interest spreads where, uh, you know, sizing orders to get good fills on pro rata and um, leveling allocations is a key ingredient to success. And um, we'd also like to talk about what the uh, actual standard algorithms are and what they do and uh, why uh, and when you would use each one of them. Um, so uh, many of these names, if you've used algorithms before, should look familiar. Uh, from the top, we have a VWAP strategy, and the VWAP strategy aims to uh, track uh, VWAP benchmarks, so that's the volume-weighted average price. And it does that by constructing a volume forecast based on historical data. So we look at what time of the day um, uh, uh, different amounts of contracts trade at, averages of that over time, and then we adjust that based on seasonality for where in the expiry cycle we are. And uh, we uh, do those forecasts both for uh, outright contracts and for uh, spread contracts, exchange-traded calendar spreads. And uh, essentially what the algorithm does is it builds a pre-trade schedule and releases child order quantity according to that schedule to stay in line with those historical, aver historical averages. And so the aim there is to track VWAP and that strategy because it's maximally spread out according to where volume trades. Um, if you expect your slippage to be impacted mainly by how fast you're trading because this is um, at all points trading uh, as, as slowly as it can, it's also in that sense the minimal market impact strategy. And um, it's best used for uh, products that are liquid in the sense that their historical volume information is going to be a good predictor of current day's trading activity um, and uh, where you have time to work your order over, um, over several minutes to uh, the entire day. And uh, these strategies are all designed to spend some time working passively to achieve passive fills and not just cross the spread. As you'll see in a bit, we also have parameters that let you kind of uh, tune your preference for things like how, how often you'd like to cross the spread to stay in line. The uh, strategies also employ anti-gaming techniques so that there's a randomized element to um, uh, how we react to market conditions and uh, how we size our child orders to minimize our predictability and footprint to our uh, um, contra trading participants. And the TWAP algorithm is, uh, in a sense, a simpler version of VWAP rather than uh, scheduling based on historical volume patterns. It's just an even schedule over time. And uh, TWAP is um, you know, more predictable on when it's going to trade because you just know it's going to trade evenly. And it can be a valuable alternative to VWAP if you're trading in a liquid product where uh, the historical volumes may not be a good predictor of today's activity. Uh, POV is percentage of volume, so that rather than trading uh, based on historical volume patterns, it releases child orders as today's trade volume unfolds. And so it uh, attempts to participate in a specified participation rate against today's market volume. The advantage of that, again, is that it um, is trading based on today's information rather than a forecast based on history. So you're always trading based on what the market's actually doing. The disadvantage of that is because it's not allowed to plan ahead of time, it's 
always essentially playing catch up to what's happening in the market. And uh, scale POV is a variation of POV that lets you reflect an opinion on whether you think the market's prices are going to exhibit trending or reversionary behavior. What it does is it lets you set a band on your participation rate. So rather than saying participate in 3% of the market's volume, you could say participate somewhere between half a percent and 3% of the market's volume and choose somewhere in that range depending on how far the price has drifted from the arrival price of the order. And uh, parameters allow you to choose how strongly you wish to follow uh, that alteration between that minimum and maximum participation rate. Implementation shortfall, or IS, is an arrival price algorithm. And uh, what it does is it shifts more of the execution towards the start time of the order. And it does that by tilting the VWAP schedule. So it looks like it looks at the historical VWAP patterns, uh, looks at that normal VWAP schedule, and tilts more of it towards the start time of the order. And uh, the reason for doing that is to shift more of your execution towards your decision time prices. Uh, but again, if you believe that trading faster means higher market impact because you're trading faster near the open, on average you may expect to have higher market impact with this order, but at the benefit of more certainty in execution price. When you spread things out entirely according to VWAP, the market can drift from where you're making your decisions. Sometimes that'll go in your favor, sometimes it'll go against you, uh, but if you're averse to that risk, using implementation shortfall can help you control that risk and uh, an aggression setting lets you choose the trade-off between how fast to trade at the start of the order versus how much to spread it out. The close algorithm is, in a sense, is essentially a mirror image of the implementation shortfall algorithm. It shifts more of the execution towards the end time of the order. And uh, the reason you might want to consider that algorithm would be if you're exiting a position and you want to hold your exposure for a longer period of time on average, so uh, you do more of the execution towards the end time of your order. The other time to use that would be if your uh, performance is benchmarked to uh, say end of day uh, prices and you want to execute most of your trade near the settlement or near the cash close of the product. Unlike the uh, um, previous algorithms we've discussed, uh, we also have an iceberg algorithm, which rather than trying to follow a benchmark like an arrival price or a volume weighted average price, or a percentage of volume, it um, sends orders um, to, with randomized sizes to uh, minimize your foot, footprint when you're just trying to get an order done. And so the iceberg is a randomized iceberg. If your limit price is passive, it'll send out a passive child order with a quantity somewhere between a min show and a max show setting that you set. And when that order fills, it sends out another one. Uh, if your order is marketable, it will uh, go through and send an IOC order to take the liquidity it can see in the market data. But you can also specify a passive price level parameter if you prefer pegging behavior. And in that case, we'll always peg to a specified level in the order book. And uh, we want to take a little bit of time to go over more detail some of the parameters that you're able to set for these algorithms. And uh, we discussed some of them casually on the previous slide. But uh, just to go over some of the ones we didn't hit on, uh, for every algo, you can specify a start time and an end time. And so for the benchmark algorithms like VWAP and TWAP and CLOSE and IS, the algorithm uh, schedule divides your total quantity from the start time to the end time based on the scheduled percentages. And uh, for algorithms like POV and Iceberg, which just try to get as much done as they can over time, uh, the order will give up once the end time is reached. And I would price uh, is available on uh, the benchmark algorithms, and it's a, a price where uh, you say if the market reaches this price, it's a really great price, just try to fill as much as you can at that price and uh, um, start uh, ignoring the schedule, just get as much done as possible. And so, for instance, if you're trying to uh, buy the S&P Mini and uh, price is around 2300 and you say, hey, if the price falls to 2200 that's a really great price to buy. I just get as much of the order done as possible. So the I would price lets you uh, enter that preference. The maximum participation rate is a key parameter for the percentage of volume strategy, but it's also an optional parameter for um, a bunch of the other benchmark strategies that can act as a constraint. 
So if you have a really big order and you specify a VWAP and you start working it at the start of the day where the market's very active and we schedule a lot to execute at that time, but that quantity is um, exceeding a POV constraint, we'll hold back to honor that constraint. And uh, the uh, POV strategy, we mentioned that one of its drawbacks is it's playing catch up with the market data and that it's allowed to trade quantity based on the amount of volume it's seen in the market data. Um, one way to help minimize the negative consequences of playing catch up with the market is to set a block limit setting. And what this does is it says if we see a trade print in the market data above this size, we'll ignore it for the sake of calculating the volume participation rate. And so uh, that way, if there's a big print for, say, 10,000 contracts and you have a 5% participation rate set, uh, rather than being able to trade an extra 500 right away, it'll ignore that big print. And so it'll hold back on, on immediately trying to get that 500 done. Uh, the tracking parameter is a parameter that you use in scale POV to specify whether you think that the prices are going to be trending or reverting, and uh, that's uh, how we choose to uh, set the participation rate on a dynamic basis between the minimum participation rate and the maximum participation rate. And uh, um, the, the final three parameters are parameters we already discussed when explaining what the iceberg algorithm does. So now what we'd like to do is um, Go, David, just we'll go through some of the exchange, some of the products that are on the CME now, and then let Jim go into some examples, some live examples. So, yeah. So um, currently, uh, we're up and running with uh, the um, uh, list you see on the screen in terms of product coverage, and uh, these are essentially liquid uh, uh, CME products on uh, the whole variety of um, Globex exchanges, and we support both the outrights and the calendar spreads. And uh, we do uh, release support for the algorithms on a product-by-product product basis since we do go product-by-product to product, so model uh, patterns in volume and volatility and matching engine characteristics. And over time, we're going to be releasing the algos for a wider variety of exchanges. I'll show you how to execute this in CQG. It's pretty easy. So I set up a page. Here I have, um, let's say, Nat Gas, and I've already put some orders in, but I'll show you how you put an order in. So you simply choose from this drop-down list which of the, um, of the uh, algos that you want to try. In this case, I chose the percent of volume. And you can set it up so it's default as well, and I'll show you where that is here under the setup. If you go under the trading preferences, we actually have a section here where you can go into the algo orders, and you can set each one up individually. So if you wanted them, to have some sort of default in them, like in case of uh, percent of volume, I've set a 5% participation rate by default. Uh, you can do that. So you can set it up by default, and each one of these has its own uh, setup. Um, but you can always set it up on the fly right from here. So again, I'll choose percent of volume, and let's say I wanted to go ahead, and I'm long 24 and I'm working 26. If I wanted to work to do 25 more, right, um, I could go ahead and say buy 25 more at the market, or I could place a limit order in there, but I'll buy 25 at the market. This box pops up. It's my confirmation box, and from here I can choose what we said, all the parameters that we went through, and I can choose my start time and end time. In this case, I'm just going to enter an end time. So I'll just put it for a few minutes out and place the order. And out. Oh, accidentally made a mistake, <laughs> of course. Whoops. Two mistakes now. All right, uh, can't go past this. Let's see, what time is it now? It's 3.24, so put this at 15. Okay, so now I'm working this many contracts. Um, I can now put this into what we call our cost analysis studies. So I can see how I've been doing. And we do have a quote board up here. And from the quote board, you can see um, all of the things that are available up here. There's actually a whole bunch of studies uh, that are available. If you go here and into our studies, we have a tab here that says Algo Order Analytics. And from here, you can, uh, if you want some information on what these are, for instance, if you want to see what your what was the TWAP over the time that you've been executing the price? What was the VWAP over the time you've been executing the price? 
all these things are available. Your fills, it'll show you as you've been getting filled. Uh, it'll show you your participation rate uh, according to the uh, market volume. Uh, what's your fractional daily volume? If you don't know what some of these mean, like some of them are a little more complex, like figuring out your internal return in basis points, you can come down here and you can go into the info and we'll give you additional info on that particular item. Okay, and here's all the stuff that we have info on. Okay, so that's found under studies and under algo analytics. So for here, uh, one of the things you could do, so for, if you wanted to find your fills, right, you could actually go to the win one of the orders that's being worked on, right, this one's working. I can actually left click and hold the left click down on that order, and I can drag it down and drop it into my, um, right into my study. So that'll tell me where my fills are, if I have any fills in this market, which I have a couple fills here, 24 fills. Uh, if I pull in the sooner one, let's take this one, drag that one in. That one should show me the fills from earlier. That one's still working. Oh, this is the one that's working. Sorry, you have to take the right order in, obviously. But, uh, so then here, I'll be able to see where my other fills are. Let's see. Scroll back. Here they are. So as you hover over, you're able to see what was filled there. You got to fill here. You got to fill here. Uh, you can see your total quantities up here as well. Uh, you can actually, as a kind of a shortcut, if you wanted to see any of these quickly, you can, you know, click on, let's say, fractional daily volume. You can click on this. It'll open up a chart, five minute, and you can actually see your study down on the chart. And that tells you what you are over this time period since I put the order in, how much of the volume I was on a daily basis, which since it's only 25 contracts, you would expect it's going to be super low, and it is super low. You can also figure out if you wanted to see something like your VWAP or TWAP, which I think are a little bit more interesting, you can do that. So you can go to your TWAP, click on that, and you can see what your TWAP was over the time period. So that's the TWAP, and you want to compare that to maybe your average fills or something. Go ahead and put your average fills on there, and you can see what your average fill price is. Sorry about that. Uh, your average fill price is almost identical to what your TWAP was over that time period, mainly because the market's been going sideways, so it would be ex expected to be filled over the time at the, at a, in a flat market like that. might not be the same if I'm looking at VWAP, which I could put that on as well. So here's my VWAP study, and the VWAP study is uh, actually the same as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much getting filled at the price that you would expect TWAP and VWAP in a flat market. And that's how you use uh, CQG and uh, how you use the RCM algo orders. Um, they're pretty interesting, and I think uh, you'll find them useful. Turn it back over to you, Joe. Sure. So, um, and that's pretty much our overview here. Uh, we're, I think Allison's going to have it open up for questions, possibly. And uh, yeah, if anyone has questions, go ahead and put them in the Q and A. Okay, one of the questions we have is what sort of minimum order size do you believe is needed for ALGOS to give a benefit? So that's an interesting question. Uh, when we design benchmark algorithms, you know, we're really designing them around the anticipation of working a larger order and minimizing market impact. But we do often get clients that send flow for a very small clip size. Maybe they're just doing a few contracts or even one contract. And the benefit you might see in situations like that is certainly less because you have less to get done. But if your alternative is to send a market order, 
um, and cross the spread, it does give you an opportunity to uh, um, spend some time working the uh, order systematically to try to get a uh, passive fill before you, um, uh, before you take the step of crossing the spread. Um, but it really depends on the turnover of your alpha signal, why you're trading, and uh, the product and all that stuff. Um, okay, and another question we have is, is there any support in the CQG IC API for this? At the current time, we do have plans to put it into the API, but it is not ready just yet. But we figure that should be in the first quarter, I mean, by the end of the second quarter of this year. And currently it's available on the integrated client's order entry tools as well as the QTrader. That's right. Um, how do we get access to the algos? Yeah, so to get access to the algorithms, um, you contact um, uh, uh, um, RCM um, and uh, the contact information in the invite. Um, we will have you guys um, reach out to your account representative at CQG if you do have any questions um, or someone from um, RCMX. Yes. and. Um, uh, we do have um, RCMX, um, that's rcm-x.com, uh, where you can find out more information. Okay, our next question is, will the use of iceberg orders depend on the exchange being traded? Yes, yeah, so the iceberg algos are supported across products and it doesn't leverage the exchange native iceberg, so uh, we manage sending out each new child order as the previous one is filled, so it works even if the exchange doesn't have a native iceberg order type for the product. Okay, and um, do these algos work for options? If not, is it coming soon? Yeah, currently, we support um, the outrights and the calendar spreads, and we are uh, looking at adding options execution algorithms later this year. If somebody wants an individual, uh, you know, demo of these of this product, I'm happy to do that. You can call CQG 1-800-525-1085, and I'll go through it with you uh, individually. Maybe the ones you may be more interested in. Okay. Another question we have is. Are there strategies like pair trade, implied volume-based option strategies available as well? Yes, so the option strategies are something uh, we're looking to add later this year. And okay, another question, is the ALGO separate platform or is it integrated IC. Yeah, so um, I think the question is about uh, where the algos are run and uh, um, uh, while you enter the parent order on integrated client or queue trader, um, the algo logic itself uh, resides in the Strategy Studio technology stack on a co-located server and so all of the child order logic is, is made uh, server side. Okay, and um, what are the most often used on the list of algos? Yeah, so I think the most often used algo is probably VWAP. I think um, uh, VWAP is something that's very familiar to most traders. Iceberg is also popular. And uh, um, I think that, you know, over time it's um, good for traders to um, consider using IS as an alternative to VWAP because it does give you more flexibility in terms of how fast you want to execute. And uh, um, the aggression parameter on the IOS gives you control over how fast versus VWAP. So if you do tend to uh, like slower execution with less market impact, you can always use the IS algo and specify an aggression of zero versus um, the default aggression, which would be five, or the maximum tilt, which would be an aggression of 10. And you can 
choose along that spectrum from, uh, from zero to 10. Okay. Sure. Our next question is, what is a parent order? Yeah, I maybe should have clarified that. So a uh, parent order is essentially the VWAP order. And so when we think about how an execution algorithm works, um, the algo engine receives uh, a big order to trade, say, like uh, 100 contracts, 1,000 contracts, 10,000 contracts, whatever it happens to be. And we call that the parent order. And the way we execute that is by sending smaller orders over the course of time. And uh, we refer to that as, as child orders. Okay, and do you have any algo specific to illiquid markets? So for illiquid markets, um, oftentimes we see a TWAP being popular because it's not looking at the historical volume, which might not be a reliable guide to what's going on today. Um, and also um, Iceberg can be popular for that. And we have worked also with um, clients to develop custom algorithms uh, tailored to uh, illiquid products. Okay, our next question is, how can we build custom strategies using the platform? So for the pre-canned execution algorithms, um, those are strategies that are built by us, and we can uh, customize them and uh, um, build custom algos. But those are always execution algorithms where you send us, again, what we call parent order, and we work the child orders for you. Um, that being said, the technology that we use to uh, build the algos, uh, we also license out um, as a software license to firms looking to build black box automated strategies. Okay, um, can you clarify on whether this, um, the algos were developed by RCM at RCM or if they come built in CQG with RCM able to tinker with the base ones to adapt them to our liking. Yeah, so um, all of the technology that the algos run on and the uh, algorithms themselves are built by the team at RCMX and we've integrated with CQG to provide easy access from uh, their order entry interfaces. And uh, CQG has also built out some nice tools that you saw during the demo today for uh, transaction cost analysis. I think we are about at time for questions. Um, so if you guys do have any other um, questions, please make sure you reach out to RCMX or CQG. Um, if you did miss anything during today's webinar, you can view a recording on um, CQG's YouTube page and it will be sent out via email. Um, and then, like I said, for follow-up questions, go ahead and contact RCMX or CQG. I do wanna thank um, Jim from CQG and RCMX for being here today and presenting. Um, do you guys have any closing remarks? No, we just appreciate everyone's time today and, uh, and uh, please reach out if you have any more questions or you'd like to get more involved in the Alamos. Okay, thanks everyone.